Well, that took off quickly, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, anyway, hello everyone, Texie88 here and welcome to another review. And now I'm taking a look at the Sinclair ZX Spectrum version of Tintin on the Moon. With, uh, Tintin being the Belgian adventurer and, um, and reporter created by Belgian cartoonist Georges Remy, who, who's best known by his professional um, name, Hergé. Now, when they got when Infogram got permission to um, to release this, uh, then they couldn't really ask Hergé himself, as he had he had died six years before the game came out in 1989. So presumably, they would have had to have asked here his widow. But anyway, the, they get permission. They did, and they uh, and Tintin on the Moon is actually the first ever game to feature Tintin, uh, uh, the Tintin universe in it. And it, the this game is loosely based on two of the, of Hergé's books. So, one was called Destination Moon and the other was called Explorers on the Moon. It's one of a small number of, um, of two, two book stories that uh, together make um, one, big, uh, one bigger story. Although uh, it's, it's, it's arguably it's more about them. it's more based on the book Explorers on the Moon than, than Destination Moon so much. So what you've got to do in this is get uh, the moon rocket that you just saw taking off in that introductory screen and get it safely to the moon while uh, whilst trying to thwart the um, the evil plans of Colonel Jorgen, who was also goes under the name of Colonel Boris, as, uh, as he had actually appeared in one of the previous Tintin books, King Ottokar's Scepter, and... Colonel Jorgen is his real name, but uh, he was going under the name of Colonel Boris uh, um, uh, for a last dastardly scheme that he was doing in that particular uh, story. And he, he's the only um, he's the only villain per se in, in this. Uh, or at least in this game. So I'm just going to redefine my keys. Left, right, up, down, extinguish, and pause. It's extinguish because um, you spend quite a bit of time putting out fires with a fire extinguisher. So let's let's get going. Take controls. So you first start off in these into the screen bits where you're controlling the rocket. These yellow orbs give you additional energy, which is that ever-depleting number in the bottom left corner. And you're also trying to collect eight of the red orbs. Ideally, you want to collect as many of the yellow orbs as you can because, of, because your, your energy constantly depletes. Right. So now, when you collect red, eight red orbs, then it goes into this side on screen where you're controlling Tintin. And there's Captain Haddock walking past there. He's an... And what you first thing you gotta do is collect this fire extinguisher to help put out the fires. Now walking through fires doesn't harm you, so don't worry about that. And there's Tintin's dog Snowy. Due to presumably due to space constraints, he could only just sit there and, and bark. But in other other versions of the game, um, he can actually he actually does walk around. But then those other machines had more memory than Spectrum. There was no 128k version of this game, only the 48k version. And then there's Professor Calculus, who, who, who actually made this whole moon trip possible. And you see at the bottom of the screen there, there's a, there's a gauge going from left to right, which shows how far the rocket is from the moon. Now, this here is a bomb that you have to walk into to defuse it. That man there is the engineer Frank Wolf and that guy who I've just hit with the fire signature is the evil Colonel Jorgen that I mentioned earlier. So what you're trying to do to get onto the next bit is put out all the fires and, and defuse all the bombs so there's only one bomb in this section. Nice use of colour and 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 Jorgen can also cap yeah can also top and capture and tie up uh, Captain Haddock and, and Professor Calculus. So you've got to untie them as well if they're, if they're tie, tied up. 
to your um if if either or both um, Professor Calculus and Captain Haddock are tied up, you'll see their pictures in on the left of the screen if, if either or both of them are. Oh, I took a couple of hits from Astro. That, that number in the bottom right corner is just your score. Oh, I couldn't get that one. Sometimes the angle at which... I couldn't get that either. Sometimes the angles are so sharp that you can't actually collect some of the orbs. There's snowy yapping. And if there's at least one fire, then there'll be that flame in the middle left of the screen, which you can see there. Now, and you see these, there's these flames here, but I can't do anything about them because I need to get the fire extinguisher again. So I've got to hunt for that. It tells you the top, the bombs in the top left are the ones you've diffused, and the ones in the top right are the ones you still need to find. So I've found both of them now. So there's the fire extinguisher. So I've just got to pick up. Oh, that was Colonel Jorgen, and he's just kidnapped Professor Calculus. So I've got to, got to hit him, hit him with the fire extinguisher as well to stop him from wandering around. He fought, follows a set path, so. It, you might be lucky enough to eventually learn his path and know where, um, where he's going to go so you're ready for him because he can come can pop up unawares and um, because you don't get that you don't get oh, speak of the devil right he's tied up So, sorry about that pause there. Just had... so that's Colonel York. Gonna... It can be a bit hard to get the ladder. You have to line yourself up just right, otherwise, you... otherwise Tintin doesn't go up. And this can be quite an... annoying when you're in a in a hurry. And oh god, I can't find it. Right. Up. And that's annoying. Some sometimes Jorgen stays tied up for quite some time, and other times he breaks out almost instantly like that. And then you take a hit in it, and it and you can't move for a little while. Ugh. And while that, of course, while that's happening, your energy in the bottom left corner is still draining. Right, I've untied Professor Calculus. I can't go up there. I can't go. Up. You can't climb up there, um, there either. Oh, damn it. I just like, put out all the fires, another one pops up. Still got to find Jorgen and put him out of commission by tying him up. You just got to hit him with the fire extinguisher. Damn it, another fire's come out from somewhere. Right, Jorgen's tied. Oh, damn it, he got back up again almost instantly. So I'm tr frantically trying to find that uh, the, the, the other fires. There might be just one. There might be more. Uh, mm, all the fires. Are, no, no, they're not. Because uh, where's the fire? I can't find it. No, not there. Put you out of commission, Jorgen. Ah, there we go. And then you do that about five times. Now I'm actually going to end the review here because um, uh, that, that, that's all you do in this game, and and it gets uh, progressively harder. So I've just I've just um, I've just aborted the game. So that's Tintin on the Moon by Infogram release, and it's the Spectrum version I've just reviewed. Um, it also it also came out for the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, Atari ST, Commodore Amiga, MS-DOS, and Sega Master System. Graphics. Considering the colour attribute limitations of the spectrum, they managed to get in quite a bit of colour. 
Tintin's in monochrome, which I, which, which makes a lot of sense considering how how much he interacts with things. So the um, as he saw, with the exception of Frank Wolf, uh, who's the engineer. Uh, uh, both uh, Captain Haddock and Professor Calculus and Colonel Jorgen himself have had colour added to him w without causing too much in the way of attribute problems. So, a very um, clever use of colour there, and the characters are still pretty much recognisable, especially Captain Haddock. Animation um, is um, is okay. I'm I'm not going to be too mean to it because it's an eight bit machine and. And they serve their purpose in there. They're generally clear that there was never any point where I couldn't see what was going on. Nice use of. I mean, you can even see on the back on the outside of this, and 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 even with the flames that you saw, which you had to put out with the fire extinguisher, there was nice use of color on that as well. The program has really done a good job of getting plenty of color in without causing too many attribute problems. Sound is a little bit on the disappointing side, but. Uh, then again, this is not multi-load and it's um, only a 48k version. As I said, there was never a 128k version, um, even though that particular computer had been out in the UK for three years by the time uh, Tintin on the Moon came out. The I could have, I would have preferred if there could have been a little bit more sound in the interior sections. Uh, there's plenty in the exterior ones and. It, and it, it serves its purpose. It's clear. It's very clear what kind of sound effect shows that you've hit a rock or, or hit a one of the two types of orb you're trying to collect. Gameplay. My only real gripe with this game is that it's far too easy and and rather short. Other niggles that I have with it, uh, if you're not very well, if you haven't got Tintin well aligned with a, a ladder, then uh, then he'll accidentally, then he then he won't go up or down it, which can be a problem if you, particularly if you've got Colonel Jorgen um, very close behind you because he only has to touch you and you'll be knocked out for a little bit. Um. And uh, it, you can get so many of the yellow orbs that um, there's not really a huge amount of, uh, of of worry about your energy running out. Uh, so it really wouldn't take you all that long to complete this. And once you have, it's very it's very doubtful that you would particularly feel like you wanted to come back to it uh, anytime soon, if ever. Because you, you don't really get a sense of fulfilment by completing it, uh, especially as it's so short and so easy. It is a shame, but the game came out. Uh, the game cost nine pounds ninety nine for cassette and fourteen pounds ninety nine for disc, and for a game that can be completed as easily and quickly as as this particular version of Tintin on the Moon, that's simply not good enough, even for a game from nineteen eighty nine. I mean, you had heavyweights like Operation Thunderbolt and Chase HQ coming out for the Spectrum for much the same kind of price, and then both of those are a far more satisfying experience and and have and have much more in the way of challenge. So you actually feel like you've accomplished something when you complete those. This, unfortunately, not nearly as much. So I'm going to give Tintin on the Moon for the ZX Spectrum five out of ten. Could have done with being more challenging and possibly longer. Maybe there wasn't enough space to make it longer, but not really a game that's got particularly lasting appeal, sadly. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, review. Catch you on another video soon. Texie88 out.